Hello everyone! In today's video, I will be going over all 12 new overclocks Ghost Ship has given us in today's video. How this video will be structured is by class. Gunner, NG, Driller, and finally Scout. I will be going over every 3 new overclocks for each class, and showing my first reaction and what I have written down for each new overclock while also going over the ups and downs for anyone who hasn't unlocked each overclock. I want to add a note here that each overclock was played with a set build that I came up with, and is not going to be the definitive build I would suggest running with each overclock. I will be doing separate build videos for each overclock once I have played around more with each one. And with that out of the way, this is all 12 new overclocks in Deep Rock Galactic. Enjoy! Rotary Overdrive is getting added to my list of fun overclocks. What Rotary Overdrive does is give you coolant injectors, letting you cool down the minigun's heat buildup, as well as letting you instantly cool the gun down from an overheat. You get 10 of these, and they can be resupplied. You also get a faster rate of fire for the minigun, but at the cost, your minigun is going to be overheating a lot faster now. So I'm assuming if I overheat this, you, you're my test subject. Get stunned, bitch. Bop. Oh my god. Oh lord, meatball. <laughs> what I had written down for Rotary Overdrive was it was incredible. I didn't know how much I needed this overclock for the minigun. A great addition for Gunner's many killing machines. Mortar Rounds is probably my most favorite overclock Ghost Ship has given us in this season. Mortar Rounds lets the Thunderhead shoot mortars at unexpected victims. The mortars have significant AoE damage and radius from the blast, but at the cost, you have a slower rate of fire and your ammo has almost been cut in half. <laughs> oh my god. Bye bye. <laughs> Literally in two shots, you reach maximum fire rate. That is insane. The amount of area damage this thing does is literally absurd. <laughs> what I wrote down for mortar rounds was just destruction. This overclock is really fun to use. Sucks you don't have a lot of ammo, but I can see why, because if Ghost Ship gave this monster any more ammo, I think all of Hoxie's would be gone. Cluster charges were something to get used to when I first played a game with them, but they're still amazing. Cluster charges turn the Hurricane's rockets into clustered packed missiles that do a lot more damage on impact, but can also be detonated in the air to send down a flurry of cluster nades that destroy bugs on the ground, but with the downsides of a slower rate of fire and a reduce in magazine and ammo. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that poor grunt. What I wrote down was not what I was expecting, but still death reigns from above. While I did have fun with this overclock, I will say it's a little annoying that you have to hold reload to detonate charges, but it still was fun to blow up the grunts. Probably need to bring a better build with this next time I use it. The pump action is a really powerful overclock, giving you a lot more damage and blow through rounds so the grunts in the back can feel the extra punch, but with the downsides of less ammo and a slower rate of fire. Come here, boy. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Bam. Bop. 
That's got like a nice, a nice sound to it that I really like. Oh my gosh. Holy shit. Oh, get out of here, Slasher. What I had written down for the pump action was it was extremely satisfying and it had a lot of damage, but it loses out on ranged targets. But of course, if you've ever used a pump shotgun before, you shouldn't really be using it at far ranges. The Hyper Alloy Assembly is a hit or miss with me, giving the stubby a reduced base spread and increased weak point damage, but at the cost of ammo and a massive hit to your recoil while firing. It's a bomb defusal. I haven't seen one of those in forever. Oh my god, that recoil. You. Ooh, maybe taking... Oh shit. I woke up, Betsy. Oh, damn. Ah, oh, shit. I will say that does shred, but... Oh, god. <laughs> Ball damage. It shreds, but, like, the recoil sucks. I definitely should have taken the recoil dampener. What I wrote down was I wasn't really impressed. Felt like a baby version of AI stability engine, but with the added recoil. Though it could have been how I built it while I was getting these clips. Smart Trigger is an overclock that should have been first released along with the Lock 1. What Smart Trigger does is it grants the Lock 1 automatic fire to any bug that has a lock on, and it locks onto a bug a lot faster. But it's going to be a lot harder to put more lock ons to one single bug. I, I, hear, I hear some bugs. You! Oh! <gasps> what the hell? Oh shit. Oh! <gasps> hey, yo! Holy shit. So you just, you just hold down the mouse button and it just kills. What I wrote down for Smart Trigger was, this is what I've been waiting for. This overclock is satisfying to use and will shred through grunts and your ammo with the right build. Definitely going to be taking this a lot more often. Scorching Tide is another overclock that is getting added to my fun overclocks list. What Scorching Tide does is give the flamethrower the ability to fire out a wave of fire that scorches any bug that was in front of you. Just know that the charged shots cost a lot of ammo to fire out, and you can't move as fast while charging up the shot. So be careful where you stand while charging up. <gasps> my unexpected victims! Bop! Holy shit. <laughs> How much does that cost to shoot out? Oh. oh! It only costs 25. That is not a lot. How high does it go? Oh. Oh, does it drop flame on the floor too? Oh, that's so fucking cool. What I wrote down was Epic Sneeze Blast. This is just what the flamethrower needed. It does a lot of fire damage up close or out of far, and it doesn't cost too much ammo to charge up. The downsides are worth the impending burn wounds on the grunts. Crystal Nucleation is an interesting take on the Cryo Cannon. What it does is it creates slowing and damaging crystals on the ground for the grunts to walk over, and the longer they stay in the crystals, the more freeze builds up over time and this is affected by the freeze power and gear mods. The downsides are less ammo. So, is this overclock just gonna be like, sticky fuel? But, cryo? Oh. Okay, that's a new look for the cryo cannon. Walk through that. Nice. I'm just gonna keep applying that for you. <laughs> Enjoy that. Ooh. Does Fragile work with it? Oh my god. That's wrecking. What I wrote down for this was, it's like sticky fuel, but cold. Definitely a different take on how to use the cryo cannon, but this overclock makes freezing the bugs a lot easier.
Combustive Goo Mix is another fun overclock on my list now. Combustive Goo makes gooed enemies and puddles explode when set on fire, and it makes bugs set on fire explode when gooed. But with the downsides of charged shots costing more ammo, and burned enemies will be doused after they have exploded. Ah yes, my test, my test, my test victim. Come here. Oh my god. Oh my god. What the hell was that? The explosion when they were on fire was way bigger when I goo the- hold on. <laughs> oh my god. Get gooed? Oh. Uh, what I wrote down while after playing with Combustive Goo Mix was, it makes it go boom. This overclock is a lot of fun, and I like that you can make the explosion go off in multiple ways. Would recommend a different overclock with the EPC than the one I was using while getting the clip. Burst Fire is pretty straightforward. Burst Fire gives the Deep Core a 3 round burst mode, an increase in damage and stun chance, and it gives more ammo, but with the downsides of a slower rate of fire. Ooh. Oh, that, that is, that's nice, actually. That is satisfying. Okay, so you don't have fully automatic with the 3 bursts. That's a bit upsetting. Hey, you. Yeah, fuck you. Get stunned. Bet you the stun gear mod would be a lot better with this. What I wrote down after using Burst Fire was that it was a pretty basic overclock. Felt like taking the burst rifle for gunner's secondary as a primary, but it was still pretty satisfying to hit the weak points on the grunts. Maybe I'll use a different build next time. Marked for Death is an amazing overclock. What this overclock does is let focus shots apply a damaging multiplying dart to one bug, making them take a lot more damage. And this can also stack with cryo nades and the IE nades. And you have an increased focus shot speed, with the downsides of focus shots costing more ammo, and you have almost no damage with focus shots on the M1000. It's gonna be interesting. Oh, oh, let's try it out. Oh, oh, my mouse, my mouse died. Oh, fucking AO. Okay, so it takes three shots. You, you're dead. <laughs> hey, you, stop that. Now die. <laughs> that's just, oh my god, that's just crazy. Stop. I like that you can still use it like the with the, oh my god. Oh, a prospector. Oh, yo. What up, boy? What's up? What I wrote down after using Marked for Death was pretty good overclock. It's satisfying to see the bug's health bar just get shredded right before my eyes. And you can still use the M1000 to deal out damage towards the bugs that got darted. Conductive Thermals is another fun overclock added to the list. Conductive Thermals applies a buff towards electricity fire, and frost damage, and it makes enemies with the fire and frost debuff apply faster. On the downsides of a lower damage output and more heat generated per shot. Oh. Oh. What the hell? Does that spread? Nope. Does it just amplify the electricity effects? Hey, shut up. I think it does. Bop. Oh my god! That just set him on fire so much faster. What the hell? You're not escaping. Nope. Oh my god. I could just shoot one of those arrows down and then I could just like keep shooting at them and look at some on fire. Oh, it's, that's so good. What I had written down for conductive thermals was it was a really fun overclock. It's nice that you can pair this with a crossbow to help freeze or burn the bugs and do a lot more damage. But I don't like the fact that I'm constantly overheating every 0.3 milliseconds.
And that's all 12 overclocks added in Season 5. Thank you to everyone that stuck till the end. This has been a lot of work for me, and I'm sorry for the lack of uploads throughout these past few months. I'm still in the midst of personal issues, but I appreciate every one of you for your patience as I'm dealing with these issues that I'm having with my life. Thank you all so much, and I hope to see you in the mines. Rock and stone. <laughs>